screen. Yeah, three, two, one. We can start. Three, two, one. Beautiful viewers. Here we go. <laughs> good evening. Hey, everybody. Yeah, Thanks or good morning. Even time. maybe we don't know when you are watching us because this is unfortunately pre-recorded. But because of some technical issues, anyway, we're glad to see you. <laughs> right. I'm glad to see you. So. <laughs> I'm glad to see all of the, yeah, we wanted to go live, terribly, terribly wanted to, but yeah, and interact with the, the viewers, but that didn't happen today. Hope um, as soon as it will be fixed, yeah, as soon as possible. So, let's hope for that, right? Uh, Catherine. <laughs> so actually, uh, now then, let's start talking about the topic here, which we're going to present today. And uh, let me start with this story, like introduction, like pre-story, let's say. Uh, recently, I've heard some questions from uh, current teachers and people who want to be teachers, how to start and how to develop your skills if you're like with little experience and what to do with that. So uh, today we're going to talk about that. And Marnie, who's my colleague, she knows a lot about that because she's a brain scientist, multilingual, and a live streamer as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, this uh, wonderful human is a mentor. Uh, she's mentoring teachers at Sky Angle, uh, one thing, and uh, you were in education for a long time. That matters. That's yeah. one thing. Yeah, I personally never feel I should give up, even though I kind of came from the background of education and uh, started towards like neuroscience and stuff. But the initial call was education. And that's mm -hmm. how you can develop, like, if you want to look further into, uh, you know, how humans learn, brain is what does the learning, so that can be helpful, we're going to talk about it down the road, but you're saying you do have a lot of requests of people who feel like they want to start teaching and they don't quite know mm -hmm. where to start, what do you suggest here? Actually, no, uh, it's not only from the people who just uh, want to start teaching, they, are, they have already started, but uh, some of them, they don't have special education, yeah, or even if they have education, you know, sometimes it's not so all right, I would say, because there are different universities, unfortunately, and what to do with this case? Mm, of course, uh, the first step which you can do is just like to start educating yourself, let's say, yeah. So okay, sure, self-study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> self-study. Oh, yeah. Exactly. You know what? Uh, when I realized that I want to check something more and I want to take some knowledge, and for example, I don't have enough time to go to special courses, I just found books. And the first book which I found was the book um, How to Prepare for uh, TKT. This is a teaching knowledge test. Right. And it's a Cambridge exam for teachers. And there is a lot of information there. I think it can be a good start. So the TKT uh, handbooks, uh, like one through three, yeah. or like for whichever exactly. test you want to take, that would be wonderful. Whether you're taking the test or not, eventually, right? Right. Just, you know, there's some gems, methodological mm -hmm. gems there. Do yeah. you honestly think that uh, professional training, like vocational training, and a you know establishment, uh, university, college, whatever, is so important? Can we just self-study teaching? Um, you know, actually, I personally, I think it depends on the like, uh, character. There are some people who just love teaching and they love trying something and they love to like, like some experiments, improvisation maybe. For them, it could okay. be cool. But for some people, they really need some education to check the theory first and only after that try to implement that. But yeah. I don't know, this is my opinion. What about yours? Uh, hard to tell. I've met very talented educators who never went to college to educate. Mm -hmm. They just did the TKT or they did a TOEFL mm -hmm. and then they were born uh, teachers. And uh -huh. again, that's a calling. If you want to educate, if you want to spread that proverbial knowledge, you know, you got to go do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what if you're lacking in the subject matter? Like that can be problematic. You want to teach, but you want to teach a language and you don't exactly have the necessary grasp of the language mm -hmm. yourself like have you encountered such cases ever actually yeah you know again i would say that uh, like in our countries i mean that uh, russian-speaking countries there are i would say a lot of 
people who start from the beginning and they start teaching children and because they teach children they don't also grow professionally i mean they don't master their language what to do in this case it can be a bit you know tough to know that oh i'm only with children and i don't know what to do i would personally recommend in this case to take some course books again for the exams maybe even if you don't need to pass the exam and if you don't want to just find some book uh, actually, nowadays, we are lucky there are a lot of uh, self-study books when you have uh, scripts, uh, the keys and everything. And uh, into you mean just, just uh, official all sort of uh, like milestones you uh, pass mm -hmm. to reach some uh, level of proficiency? I mean, just like take some uh, source of books, for example, I don't know, nowadays very popular is uh, outcomes. Yeah, there is a uh, different... Uh, Course well, yeah, that's what I mean to say, like, a will, huh? will, which will, like, uh, further down the road uh, land you in yeah. uh, passing some uh, Cambridge mm -hmm. language proficiency test or yeah. whatever it is. So flexing your language in case you're teaching the language. I teach one language that I am not a native speaker of, Chinese, and to teach it, yeah, I have to study it all the time continuously with a teacher. Yeah. To oh. be good, right? Because if you're not, then you're unfortunately um, not a great motivation to your own students, I would say. Right? By the way, like you have your own experience. How could you master your Chinese? Mastering is a strong word if you're speaking about Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chinese is a special language. <laughs> right. Anyway. Yeah. It's long, it's long, like it's a long journey. You can be in a country like, I don't know, come to Spain, spend two weeks, you'll speak beginner Spanish, mm -hmm. like survival, how much does it cost? And uh, please turn right, uh, yeah, um, and go with the street. In Chinese, I don't think it happens so fast. You need to spend six months, like actually mastering it. It's not really about like the learning journey uh, per se. Uh, well, hard work, grind, crunching uh and uh studying and speaking and never falling out of practice basically mm -hmm. that's what i really suggest to all the language teachers you are out there so yeah good Please moment practice. like practicing yeah you can find you know like the study buddy like it's have, good, exactly yeah have meetings every week at least for 30 minutes just to talk maybe it's already going to be enough because you will, partners. Yeah, exactly. right. you will have somebody <laughs> with your level and you can improve uh, each other each other oh, yep. not. okay those things yeah we always suggest I, you probably do suggest them as a mentor to teachers mm -hmm. that like conversational like platforms um sure. want to have them. actually no it works not only with the uh, teachers with students as well like i have Definitely. some students who are like couples or husbands and wives i tell talk to each other why not fine well, like you yeah. follow like, somebody to talk to them. i basically push them to do that <laughs> <laughs> drag your children into it normally everybody's child is much better than like they already are and mm -hmm. uh, you know they receive proper schooling <laughs> and, yeah, right. oh yeah but this yeah. is about language what about methodology because it's also important okay you can speak like actually there are a lot sure, of native sure. speakers yeah but they can teach oh, we talked about it last time right mm -hmm. those teachers yeah. <laughs> how do you use language. any some special books to like improve your methodology skills like how to teach or something like that i did get my master's so uh -huh. <laughs> that was quite uh -huh. straightforward first ones in education second was neuroscience yeah so uh that was without like the books were spoon fed to me so i did not have a hard time but now i see a whole lot of good stuff out there on coursera and mm -hmm. a lot of good right so online learning platforms like skillshare and mm -hmm. like uh, center of excellence and places like that are there any special keywords, for example, to find some interesting courses on Coursera? Again, well, or just what would you go for? Uh, TOEFL, TESOL, uh -huh. training. Uh -huh. um, would go like that, right? Uh, how was your methodology journey? <laughs> um, actually, you know, I would say that uh, I have a degree. I mean, like I graduated from pedagogical university. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the bachelor degree, not master, but anyway. Uh, but I realized that my, like, that's, let's say, methodology skills, they became better when I started uh, practicing, when I started working with adult, with adult students here at Skyeng. Right. And also one important point, actually, uh, that at Skyeng, I had, I have still uh, a lot of uh, 
opportunities to go to webinars, workshops, check different streams. Yeah. And if you are a big yeah. Yeah, thing going on here, that's true. There's ongoing support, the ongoing uh, work uh, that's being done by the methodologist team. They're like, they're strong. <laughs> Again, mentors, yeah, like uh, a lot of colleagues who can help you. By the way, like dear listener, if you're another part of Sky and Team and if you want to, just like feel free to try to apply for that and it feel will pay off. At least you will go to all the little courses and do mm -hmm. professional training. So it happens in form of uh, your roadmap uh, as a teacher in training, as a newbie, when you get there, mm -hmm. you have to. Uh, like get through a few things where you're getting tested on your methodology skills, just the basic ones, right? If you lack your basic certificates, then uh, workshops, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, it's, you know, it's about basic stuff. What if I'm already like well experienced teacher, but I still want to grow and I still want to develop what to do? I suppose you can give us some like tips like about that neuro linguistic. I see the hint over here that that like I kind of hit the rock bottom in the after I don't remember how many years of teaching like hands on practice, but I was like, I don't really know what else to uh, like study here because mm -hmm. when you're already out there teaching teachers and training teachers and like making your own webinars mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, why do humans learn? <laughs> Good question, because their brains learn. And last time I was given this uh, public speech on, is it possible to self-learn neuroscience? Mm -hmm. I came to the conclusion that yes, with the proper motivation. Got many questions of motivation. How do you stay internally motivated? Uh, how do you, <laughs> Kathy? Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, that is, this is maybe a question not only from this, but also from me. Like. Okay, you said, yeah, you can check something. What maybe are there some special books which you should start with? Which mm, is like the first would, step? Yeah, uh, I would go start with, like, if you do not want the uh, biology, chemistry, and mm -hmm. computational stuff, which is totally, yeah, it doesn't have to do with education much, I would go Joan Holt, H O L T. Like, his works are amazing for starters, and the language is not um, super academic. Mm -hmm. So, and it's quite entertaining, you know, it's how. Uh, humans learn and how mm -hmm. children learn because we all come from you know smaller mm -hmm. being smaller humans <laughs> clearly uh, how humans fail uh, so those are the works he uh, he yes does have a background in pedagogy science mm -hmm. and is backed up by neuroscience data uh, well it's weird I'm not suggesting a whole lot of like courses again mm -hmm. I would direct it to Coursera anything um SoCal universities are doing mm -hmm. this area are brilliant and why not exactly textbooks it's a new science it is uh -huh. the all the new science you get in articles in research papers that are out there and like pretty simplistic google search will land you there mm -hmm. um work in your focus if you want to read so many pages a day, right? <laughs> and and what about using in practice? Like, is it that book where you can take some information and uh, try to apply it somehow? Is it okay. possible? I do have a suggestion. If you're really willing to take it up a notch and mm -hmm. like go out there beyond the borders of teaching and uh, well, there is such a thing as neuro language coaching. Mm -hmm. Have you heard? It's when you're trying to apply the findings of neuroscience, you probably uh -huh. know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, into your classroom, reducing anxiety, uh, working with their mental blocks. It's basically like a life coach, but in uh, just a classroom environment. Uh -huh. And it pays actually too. So, hey, teachers out there, uh, $100 per hour. <laughs> <laughs> can turn yourself into a neural language coach. Yeah. You know what? I don't think like it is quite easy to like okay to check and start implementing directly. No, and there would be certification courses uh -huh. as well. So uh neuro language coaching NLC, you can go Google that. If some of you would love to become that, I mean it's all out there, right? Mm -hmm. The materials. Okay. All right. Well, uh anything we did not cover. So we did cover beginners. If you just like mm, teaching, it's not for me, should I? Should I not? We spoke about bring your language to uh, where you want it to be first, right? 
Second of all, if you're quite an experienced one, please never fall out of practice. And uh, if you consider skying, you know, that's mm. good. <laughs> um, right. Hope you guys are not going to hate us for this reiteration here. And, uh, I don't I think it's going to be. No, actually, the very last question, which we haven't covered yet, about pronunciation. I suppose this is the problem of a lot of different people, like doesn't matter the, the level of teaching or the level of language, it still can be a problem how to pronounce but What can we do with that? Well, if you want me to <laughs> go with a few just boring studies on this, studies suggest that no, not really. Accented teachers in the classroom are totally acceptable, even mm -hmm. though opinions may differ. Some people beg to differ, definitely. But the studies, again, show that people have no idea what kind of accent this is. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they take Japanese for Albanian and uh -huh. <laughs> that's all right. Oh, well, but I do see a tiny little bit of a not exactly problem, like a roadblock, just because so much content is available these days. And mm -hmm. everybody knows how this accent sounds or that accent sounds, and they do watch Netflix and they do listen to their like favorite podcasts. You cannot really um, sound incomprehensible these days. You have mm -hmm. to speak clear, right? And in case that is a problem, well, uh, work can be done in uh, that aspect too. Have you ever had anybody turn to you for uh, reduction of accents? Actually, yeah, but again, I'm also I'm not good at uh, that uh, you know perfect accent, etc. Still, uh, Which but it was perfect. Hmm? You speak very yeah. I mean, like if you speak very clear, like uh, what is yeah, the perfect yeah. accent? But you know, there are some people who say I want to sound like British or only American, and you know, yeah, there is this stuff like that uh, YouTube accent here, yeah, like the mixture of uh, all different speeches around the world. But that's, that is the thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of accepted and globish, so-called uh, globish mm -hmm. accent. I understand it. As for British, I could not fake a British accent, even if I really, really tried to. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I put my son at a British school well, these days, and mm -hmm. he's gonna get one soon. So I'm gonna. You know. oh, <laughs> it's gonna teach you. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the teacher told him that uh, no, you did not fall on your butt. You fell on your bottom, sweetie. <laughs> okay. Um, apart from that, yes, accent reduction uh, might take place. Uh, you might pick an accent idol, right? Somebody you want to sound like, you may repeat after them. That's very valuable for students too, right? You, uh, well, there's a lot that can be done. I mean, if you guys want a separate uh, talk on accent reduction, we can do that one too. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I guess our like five minutes uh, of remaining time, yeah, wouldn't allow to. Uh, really unfolded here mm -hmm. okay thanks for bringing it up then uh yeah so and if you want to take it uh out of this world study neuroscience people i highly recommend <laughs> um or this accent in line vocabulary uh better your grammar definitely a lot of skills where you can be better and better yeah actually so that is why language uh, might be interesting teaching language is interesting yeah that you also can every time study and learn something uh, the, uh, now all these like all the uh coaching happens within the communicative paradigm of course right mm -hmm. like that's a, well grammarian we're not grammarians anymore how people used to study language like that's going away so check your commun communicative approach right check your um content uh oriented learning right mm -hmm. um, check the latest trends basically there's always something new out there Cool. Right. Awesome. I love the Oxford conference too. So Oxford conference is cool. Yeah, like why not? Know. Just like actually feel free to like uh, write in Google some workshops, webinars, even if you don't want to pay, that's okay, you're for free. Yeah, sure. I think you will find a lot of information there as well. And that was coming, post a bunch of them. I know they reach out to uh, specialists, <laughs> right, right, right. To, Post webinars. All right, let's not drag it out any longer. I do believe we covered everything. I hope okay. so. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's hope for that. Uh, yeah, we can do one on pronunciation totally if you guys want it requested. 
Yeah. Actually, don't forget if you have any questions, you can text, um, like check some, we're going to check some comments. Yeah, um, definitely. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna see you really, really soon. Yeah. Have a nice time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.